Well, here we are uh, once again. So hello, everybody. Hello, greetings. Here we are, uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota, in the middle of August. And a lovely, beautiful morning and seeing people out walking and dogs and dogs walking people, people walking dogs, people carrying their little dogs. Um, bicycles, it's, uh, it's just so much fun. Sprinklers are out and um, it, it's such a joy. So um, how everyone is and where you may be. Uh, Mandan, North Dakota. Wishick, Ashley, North Dakota. Trenton, New Jersey. Helena, Montana, Tacoma, Washington, all of our uh, people who have sent n notes in and, and have contacted Trinity and, and me and all. And so it's just a, a lovely, lovely way to, to share a little bit of Bible study. Now, so here we are this morning, continuing with the lectionary verses. Uh, we are now beginning, have moved into Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15, uh, and uh, the lectionary uh, gives us a choice, actually, we can, we, to divide it up. There are two very significant stories. Um, it is uh, the confrontation with the Pharisees, um, and then um, as, as Jesus and the disciples leaves that confrontation and moves over to... Um, the Gentile world of Tyre and Sidon, um, he has uh, this meeting, another confrontation, but profoundly lovely uh, confrontation with uh, the Canaanite woman. And so as time allows this morning in our uh, 15 minutes, um, we'll try and, and just open this up so you can, um, you, I, I won't read all of this, we don't take all up our valuable minutes to read the whole because it's, um, it, it's quite involved, so we have, to, uh, we have to just jump in. And so with that, um, we will begin. Uh, Matthew 15, verse 1. And uh, here it is. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. <clears throat> this this uh, right here is the crux of the entire thing. This, uh, this question... Uh, this accusation uh, is truly the whole hinge of it. And I suppose if somebody was coming to church and we got this as a gospel, um, and um, uh, it, it, it corresponds, by the way, it corresponds with um, um, Mark uh, chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And um, it, it becomes the, the, the same thing. And uh, the, the, the Pharisees are asking Jesus uh, and saw some of the disciples eating food with hands that were unclean. And uh, in, in Mark, there's a little, more, a little more detail in verse 3. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. Uh, when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. <clears throat> so Mark, Mark gives us a little more detail, which is a little uh, unique for Mark, because Mark uh, rushes through so quickly. But, but Mark uh, chapter 7 is, is actually some more details. And so th this, this becomes the thing. So the Pharisees, <clears throat> who have all of this baggage about washing their hands and washing uh, kettles and pots and dishes and all of this... Um, uh, and um, they, they, they are pushing this. And so if you were to come to church uh, this, this Sunday and you get this text and you start to think, well, what does this have to do with my life about washing hands before I eat? And, you know, how, how is this important? And why, why does this matter? 
Uh, I, I mean, I can imagine a lot of people thinking that, and what does this have to do? Well, <coughs> excuse me, there, there, is, there is some depth to this. And uh, this goes back to um, Exodus and Moses um, um, of how the law was handed down to Moses and Aaron and the people. But then uh, as this grew, the Pharisees then said, if these laws are true for the, the, the temple authorities and the priests, then they ought to be good for everybody. And so what they have taken now is elevated this, this movement away from uh, a, a prescribed good idea and have elevated it into gospel. So they have um, confused and lost the beauty of the gospel and turned it into law. And, and so this, this very, very simple phrase here in verse 2, Matthew, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? Same thing in Mark 7. Um, why, uh, why do they... Uh, here's that, that reference again about um, breaking the tradition of the elders. Now the beauty of this is that Jesus turns this around completely in, in, in Mark chapter 5. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with their hands? And Jesus says, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you and hypocrites, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So uh, that is the reference that Jesus is giving um, from Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, this would be vital in our, in our study of this uh, to go and see um, about where your heart is and how you're holding on to traditions and shallow, superficial, man-made created traditions versus uh, scripture and the, the word and the rule of God. And, um, but then you see Jesus, uh, as in Isaiah chapter 1, then God says, now look, can't we be reasonable people? And Jesus basically says the same thing. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter, uh, verse 3, Matthew 3. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? You see. So uh, Jesus recognizes how these people have elevated this uh, aspect of tradition into godly obligation which is wrong. Now, however, okay, um, so as we have moved and jump, uh, how this applies and works with us, you see some churches, traditions, pastors, congregations have set up the same kind of rules. And, and you may remember that some of these, it was about, uh, are women allowed to uh, wear pants, trousers? What about dancing, music, movies, uh, makeup? Um, you, know, you see all of this, you know, you, you're allowed here, drinking, smoking, um, what books you're allowed to read, what, you know, and so you see some of these churches, e even in our cr Christian tradition, have set up these, these man-made congregational, these are our rules, but then people soon to realize that the congregation is more concerned about following their man-made rules than the rule of God. And, and so this is how this, this plays in. And so if we would have more time to, to expand about this, we would, we would understand the, the, the tension of tradition 
and rules. And so you see even in some of the other uh, denominations and, and Christian traditions that come back against liturgical uh, Lutherans, Episcopalians, or some Methodists, some Presbyterians, certainly the Catholics, you know, about wh why do you read uh, pre-printed prayers and, and why do you worship with, with uh, all of these, you know, overgarments, the, you know, vestments and stoles and candles and crosses. All of this business is, you know, is they, they see it as uh, man-made. Uh, and so the, the, this confusion and very blurred lines. Uh, but this is where some of these conversations then go. Um, and But then again, you understand, just so we don't get the wrong end of the stick, to understand that Jesus also said, um, um, I do not come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill the law. Uh, we just have to understand what, what these silly man-made things that people have lost, uh, lost their minds about and start following all of these silly, uh, this is what we believe. Oh, and the Bible's pretty good too. It's just some of that sort of stuff. So anyway, in our in our other few minutes, then we move into uh, the other side of the story. So you see the uh, the the image of Sunday's gospel story, if, if we use both of them, is this overarching rainbow umbrella. Um, of, of what is pure, what is unpure. And so you see the uh, Jesus just was, and the disciples were just tired of the Pharisees popping out of the bushes at them and accusing them of what they can and can't do. And so they, they went to the Gentile side of the lake and they went over to Tyre and Sidon. And here now is this woman uh, who confronts out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. And Jesus is silent in, in the face of this. And so here now is this confrontation of Jews and Gentiles. And so here is this lovely, beautiful thing. And how, I mean, you can get into certainly the Greek of this and the language that Jesus uses about um, dogs and um, all the rest and how he is silent. As we have mentioned in uh, Eugene Peterson's book, uh, The Message, um, Jesus, uh, it, it, it's said that Jesus ignores this woman, but in, in other, I think, more accurate translations says that Jesus is silent to her. And that's, th that's a difference. There is a difference between ignoring someone and being silent to someone. But she is persistent, and there have been other cases um, of, of parents who are doing anything and everything they can you know, for the love of their children, and they will not be silent. And she comes to him. Um, I mean, th th this is a land that that came up with Baal and and pagan worship and all the rest. But here she's leaving all of that behind and coming to Jesus, and and she. Um, she finally, in verse 25, she says, Lord, help me. And Jesus said, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And so Jesus says, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So, um... You see, understand now about understanding that Jesus does have this amazing heart of compassion and tenderness and love and grace and mercy. And where does this go? It goes to people who are genuine and honest in their faith, in their searching, in their struggle, in their brokenness, in their hurt and pain and crying and their tears. Jesus breaks his own heart to be with those people. Where does Jesus find his righteous anger? I mean, where does he find his frustration? It is in these self-righteous, sanctimonious people who have thought they have created their own heaven on earth, their own, their own righteous 
um, temple of their own making. And uh, this, you see, this whole beautiful double story of Matthew chapter 15 uh, comes to us as a demonstration of, of this, uh, both sides of the heart of Christ that comes to us. And so here we are, um, and we have run out of time in our short devotional Bible study on this lovely, beautiful morning in August. So grace and peace to you, loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.